Hi guys, it's Matt here again at Mvapes and today we're going to have a look at uh, something a little bit different. Uh, this was sent to us by a company called EH Pro. Uh, they've been around for a little while now and they make some of their own brand stuff which is, is really, really good. Um, this was sent to us by them and it is called the Mod 101. Uh, what is the Mod 101? Well, let's have a little look. It is a tube mod and as you can see it has a screen so not a mechanical mod but a uh, variable wattage uh, temperature control regulated tube mod so uh, let's have a little look that's the box that it comes in very nice packaging it comes with nice comprehensive instructions which uh, covers uh, absolutely everything um, how to set it up, you know, what the features are, uh, what all the functions are. Um, nice uh, comprehensive instruction manual. But we'll go into some of the features in detail when we look at it up close. So let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, at the mod and see what it's all about. Uh, as you can see, it is a 22mm diameter tube mod. And it's got a little display screen on here and just a single button on the other side there. And at the top we have a spring-loaded 510 center pin. Seems to be a nice spring-loaded uh, center pin there. And on the underside it says designed by EH Pro the CE certification logos and a serial number. And you'll also see on the bottom it has four vent holes as well. Now this is a modular tube so this is it in its current uh, setup which is for a single 18650 battery and you can unscrew the tube in two places and by removing this section here and screwing this bottom section back on there we go that will now uh, accept an 18350 battery so a lot smaller in size uh, I'll run through the dimensions for you in the 18350 size that measures 88mm long And in the 18650 size, that measures 118 mil long, so it's quite a size. I'll give you some size comparisons. This is a, a Nemesis mechanical mod in 18650. So as you can see, I'll just zoom in a bit for you. That is quite a bit taller than a standard um, 18650 mech mod that's sort of coming out about 25 26 mil longer um, if we put it into 18350 mode taking out this section here now we can see that in 18350 mode that's just a tiny bit shorter than a standard 18650 mech mod. Um, so it is quite a beast when it's in 18650 size. Um, but unlike a mech mod that just has to have a battery and top and bottom contacts, this has you know, a full board inside. So considering that what they've done is put a battery and a board inside, if you, you know, take an 18650 battery here and we sort of set it up like so you can see that the top half there um, is to allow for the board and all the uh, you know the electronics inside there so that's the size of the uh, device 
Uh, we'll go ahead and put a battery in and run through some of its features. Okay, let's uh, put a battery in. There's two ways you can put a battery into this. One is you can unscrew this battery cap, which has a little flat solid contact on the bottom, and inside you'll see the other contact. Positive goes towards the top, negative at the bottom. That battery cap is quite easy to uh, to use. It's got a nice cut out section that you can grip on. Um, another way is you can just unscrew the bottom switch and pop your battery in and out and do it that way. Now, if you have a battery that is a you know slightly different uh, length, then you just adjust. You just tighten this uh, cap up until it stops and makes contact and that allows you to uh, use 18650 batteries you know nipple tops flat tops um, that'll all fit in there not a problem so let's go ahead and turn it on it is a five click on and it comes up with EH Pro now on the screen Sorry if it's flashing, it's the uh, refresh rate of the uh, camera. But on the screen there you see uh, it shows wattage, battery level indicator, ohms of coil and voltage output. Okay, we'll screw a new atomizer on. And we press the fire button and it asks if it's a new coil, yes or no. And as you see it goes back to the main menu now what it does is because it doesn't have up and down buttons it confirms your selection basically by not doing anything so if you if you leave it it will select whatever it's on so I'll show you that in the menu for an example with changing the power setting so to get into the menu we press the fire button three times and it says power set then we press the fire button to adjust the wattage you can see the wattage is going up in 0.5 increments and if you press and hold it that will scroll all the way through and back to the start which is 5 watts so it goes from 5 watts to 50 watts so we select say 18 watts now we leave it and it goes back to the main screen so it's confirmed your selection just by leaving it for I think it's about two seconds so that's now in wattage mode at 18 watts. If you want to change uh, various other things, we'll go three clicks into the menu and we scroll through the menu. So we've got power set, temp set, work mode set, calibration, exit menu, display mode. So if we want to go to work mode we now have we leave it and we have mode 1 ni temp mode 2 ti temp mode 3 ss temp mode 4 power mode 5 bypass so if we want to select standard wattage mode we go to power and then we leave it and it goes to your wattage which you can then adjust and then it goes back to your main screen if you want to select uh, temperature control mode three clicks, select work mode, scroll through to whatever temperature control, say you want SS, so you go to SS temp and leave it, then you can adjust your temperature, leave it and it goes back to the main screen. So it's unconventional, it takes a bit of getting used to and it's quite hard to explain on camera but um, I've been using this for the last week and once you actually understand it and get the hang of it, it is quite intuitive to use and, and not troublesome at all. Um, it just takes a little bit of getting used to. Uh, so let's run through some of the other features. Um, this is currently a countful um, coil that's on there. So I'm going to put this on, which is the base of uh, KFUN5, which has got a uh, NI80 uh, coil on. So we will go, we'll turn it off and start again.
three clicks into the menu and we will go to work mode set and we will select NI temp and leave it and we'll adjust our temperature we'll leave it at 460 now in temperature control mode you can also adjust your wattage so I've set it at 460 uh, Fahrenheit and it's a 0.63 ohm coil and it's currently at 18 watts so I want to up the wattage so three clicks into the menu power setting is the first one that comes up so we just adjust our wattage eight to 30 watts leave it and it goes back to the main screen so that is now firing NI80 in temperature control mode at 30 watts at 460 Fahrenheit. Okay, I've gone and put it back into 18350 mode with my Serpent Alto on top, which has got a canthal build in at about 1 ohm. So that's how I've been using it for the last week or so. Um, I've been alternating between 18350 and 18650. Um, I must point out that in 18350 mode the battery in power setting doesn't last very long at all um, it literally will give you on a 1 ohm coil at 18 watts that will give you um, about a quarter of a day maybe half a day at a push depending on you know whether you're a heavy vapor or not uh, I'm sort of quite average um, but I can't get anything more than half a day out of an 18350 um, if you're building, you know, t uh, sort of 0 0.5, 0 0.6 ohm coils and vaping at 40 or 50 watts, you're literally going to get 10 minutes out of it with an 18350. Um, if you put it into bypass mode in 18350, uh, you do get a little bit longer out of the battery, but it's still not great. Um, so really, the way to use this is to have the 18350 battery in there um, and that way you can get a full day's use out of it um, but you do have to you know put up with the fact that it is quite a sizable mod but if you're a fan of uh, tube mods you like side firing and you want regulated uh, 50 watt power control uh, with a full screen um, full temperature control that does you know NI80 TI stainless steel with a bypass feature as well then you know this is the device for you um, now I'm going to put a couple of videos up I took this out up a mountain do some testing um, it was quite harsh up there and I was wearing gloves a lot of the time and I actually found that having a mod that was slightly longer and with a single fire button worked really well um, wearing big heavy gloves up a mountain so um, it's you know if it, it's it's got its uh, it has got its positives that uh, if you are up a mountain and you're wearing gloves then that extra length there and the easy single button works really really well in an everyday environment um, it's just down to whether you are okay with the length of it because it is really really long um, if you're fine with that then it's a cracking mod you know it works flawlessly um, all of the threadings uh, the 510 threading the battery cap threading the tube threadings smooth as butter cannot fault the threadings at all I've not had any issues at all with this mod um, in fact you know I've actually really enjoyed using it because for me personally I do like a you know something a bit larger um, I've got quite big hands so it suits me perfectly uh, so for shits and giggles I've got this with the Serpent Alto on. Um, if we go and put on something massive like the K Fun 5, uh, bear with me. Okay, this is the K Fun 5 without a drip tip. Let's put a drip tip in there, shall we? With a drip tip. There we go, that fits on the screen. Now that comes in at 
Oh, hang on. My verniers don't go that long. <laughs> okay. Well, the mod is 118. Plus the atomizer at 70. So, uh, 188 mil long. It's nearly 20 centimeters. Quite the size. Certainly a statement piece there. But uh, luckily, there are tiny little RTAs coming out now, like such as the Serpent Alto, Serpent Mini, and the Corolla V1.5. And they help reduce the overall size and they look quite cool on it. But what we really want to know is uh, you know, how does this mod perform uh, about 3,000 feet above sea level with uh, 50 mile an hour gusts of wind uh, and a wind chill of about minus 10. Now let's find out. seemed to work quite well up there um, you probably couldn't hear a word I was saying I couldn't hear a word I was saying but uh, it was a jolly good fun day out and uh, the mod performed really really well so I hope this uh, review has been informative and if not a laugh uh, it's uh, certainly an interesting mod um, I would recommend it because there are people out there like me they've got big hands they like tube mods you like the safety and functionality of a regulated device 50 watts is more than enough for again people with my sort of style uh, i'm a mouth to lung vapor i generally vape around 0.8 to 1 ohm um, for me it's a perfect little mod and i will continue to take this out when i go up mountains um, and uh, yeah not bad at all uh, if you like the look of this um, pop along to eh pro um, just type in eh pro and that will bring up their website and you can uh, pick one up from there um, we might be stocking these uh, I'm not sure yet but uh, give us your comments and reviews below and um, we'll take it from there I uh, hope you've enjoyed this and we'll bring you some more videos soon thanks for watching bye bye